Welcome, my friends, to the IOCrest 10 gigabit M.2 key Ethernet network expansion card unboxing and review. So for this unboxing and review, I put these things out on the table and let's talk about it. OK, so why do I want a PCIe 10 gigabit connection network card? Well, on a standard laptop, you can't really expand to a 10 gigabit networking. That's one of the things that laptops, Intel Nooks, and a whole bunch of other devices have been missing. It's the ability to go 10 gigabit networking. This is an M key designed uh, 10 gigabit connection. So if I understand it correctly, this M key is the pinout that you could use it on an NVMe port or on a SATA port, perhaps, because this looks like the NVMe, uh, not the, the SATA uh, drive SSDs type of deal. So it's beautiful. Right here, you have the MAC address which I covered up with the tape. So that does not come with it. Tape not included. Um, and this is the port. So who is this for? And here's the cabling. It's very thin. Let's just not even open it and just review the cable. That's a pretty long cable. I like that. Uh, so here is the manual for it. M.2 single 10 gigabit ethernet adapter. And here is the manual, here are the features. So this is a support PCI Express Gen 3, Gen 2. Power consumption 4.7 watts. 10 gigabit ethernet over and shield twisted pair. Jumbo frames, yes. Windows 7, 10, Ubuntu, Linux. And that's where you download the driver. Okay, so what is it I'm trying to do? Well, I've had a dream. I've had a dream of getting 10 gigabit networking on my laptop. And I've been finding that 10 gigabit networking on anything, on any, um, even Thunderbolt device. It seems that because it's a USB connection, it seems to disconnect even on a, on a Mac. Um, I've had much better success with 10 gigabit networking on Mac computers than on PCs. But what basically I'm understanding is that you could go into your PC and plug this into the PCIe port where you have NVMe drives. But then wait, you might ask, you already have an NVMe drive inside your laptop and how would you plug this 10 gigabit network connection card in? So what I've been doing is I've been ordering different kinds of adapters to be able to use this unit. So let's say your, your slot for the NVMe is already filled up. This is called an AE key. So when people look at these devices, sometimes it says A and then E right next to it. But basically put your standard Wi-Fi cards that come with your laptop come in this format. This is a 2230 format. But what's cool about this adapter is that you could take your Wi-Fi card. If you want 10 gigabit networking, you probably don't need Wi-Fi. I mean... You might miss out on the Bluetooth connections, sure, but then that's not for you. But what's cool about it is that on this end is that you have an NVMe connection and then you could actually put this thing because that's one of those things that I was worried about is you see this chunky heatsink on it. So inside a Nook, it probably would work. Inside a mini PC like a B-Link, it would work. But basically put, you just plug it into one of these bad boys. Boom. And then you have this connector from the Wi-Fi adapted to it. 
One of the things that I'm predicting that could be an issue that could be an issue is that this port might not have enough bandwidth. One of the things that I realized doing the research is that the AE key is usually a 1x PCIe lane while the NVMe ports are a 4x and uh, PCIe lane. To explain it better is if I understand it correctly uh, is each lane is 10 gigabits a second. So what my conclusion is that it might work with this or it might not. Because if the 1x lane is 10 gigabits and this is, this all this requires is 10 gigabits, technically by saturating the support, you might be able to use this 10 gigabit networking card with this long extension cable. So plug this into the Wi-Fi and this stays outside the laptop. All this wiring and stuff stays outside the laptop. And this chunky heatsink has actually a place to live and heat up things. Um, but what's cool about that is that because a lot of laptops have only one NVMe port and it's already being used by the standard operating system and you can't really get 10 gigabit networking unless you use Thunderbolt but I've been having so many issues even the USB 4 Thunderbolt to get 10 gigabit networking uh, it's it's literally really literally a headache so um, most people just just use the USB 5 gigabit networking cards they work great they work on any computer and if you want 10 gigabit, I mean, go through this hassle. So, but I like to be on the edge of tech. And <laughs> I have a gaming laptop that I want to test this out on. Uh, ideally, replacing the Wi-Fi card with that. But if that doesn't work, because my gaming laptop has a second uh, NVMe port, I bought this other adapter. This one, what I like about this is that it has a nice heavy-duty cable to stretch out, uh, so this goes into your NVMe port, PCIe, by four port, and then you could plug in this cable, and then you could plug in the, you know, plug in this beautiful cable, and stretch this to outside your computer, and, and plug in this daughter board. Into this end. And what's cool is that it, this allows you to actually plug in a longer size device. And it comes with this little tiny screw. And then you put it into one of these holes. So this is going to use a 2280. What I like about this NVMe... Um, board adapter or extension cable is that you see over here there's little holes and technically i, ha I have a laptop that has this is a 22 up to here is 22 by 42 i believe this is probably 22 by 60 if i understand it correctly 22 by see 22 by 42 22 by 60 into and full size is 22 by 80. Long story short is that some laptops, like I have a Lenovo, have only this shorter port. I had to order a special SSD that would fit in there that has a max two two gigabytes capacity. So what this means is that I could I could actually cut the rest of this off and use this in a computer that has a shorter port for it but that's secondary that i could still use the pcie lanes so that's what i really like like about this device it's it's pretty cool um has a long daughter board 
it should connect to this device pretty well. So this is a PCIe, if I understand it correctly, by four extension. So what does it mean? It means that I would have with this NVMe connection up to 40 gigabits a second. Um, so because it's eight bits in a byte, so long story short, PCIe 3.0 maxes out about three and a half gigabytes a second for really good drives. And uh, PCIe 4.0, which is double the speed, maxes out at seven gigabytes a second. So um, that's interesting. Ideally, we could use this. But then, here's another option that I found. This is the Wi-Fi card, the AE key. The AE key, see it says E and A. Adapter to a PCIe by four. But we have to understand that AE key only gives you one PCIe lane. What's interesting is that I was watching a video where somebody was powering a graphics card and it was in a slightly longer PCIe lane, like for the, the full length, because I could technically plug in possibly a 10 gigabyte gigabit card directly into here and use that. It comes with this power cable that you, apparently you could plug into here and power it off your SATA port, which I don't have, but that's kind of interesting that you could have it give additional power to the device, but it should be able to get enough uh, PCIe bandwidth directly from there. What I do like about this unit is that it uses the AE key. So for those that are using wired ethernet, the AE key, the, the Wi-Fi chip is kind of useless. You could always put it back if you want. So that's one of those things that I realized going down this rabbit hole is that the AE key is 1x speed. So that's up to 10 gigabits a second. So really 1 gigabyte a second. And what's giving me the idea that it should work is you see the way that this card is. It has the double... A notch thing and I've seen SATA drives that only can do about 500 megabytes a second have that specific SATA port and you could plug it into there um, so it looks like you could plug it into there and get 10 gigabit Ethernet so if we have a SATA port that does 500 megabytes a second possibly much higher when you plug in like a device like this technically if I understand it, maybe 10 gigabit means actually up to 800 megabytes a second, I would have to test it. So now that I've looked this over, that's the plan of action over here, is to use these various different devices and see if I can convert the Wi-Fi into usable 10 gigabit ethernet, whether it's using this, with a by four but that's one of those thinkings that i've had was why use an overkill by four port because i can only do up to a gigabyte a second let's say a gigabyte or 800 megabytes depending on because these bits and bytes they got me really confused uh maybe not that confused but it's between 800 and and, and uh 1000 megabytes a second let's say this guy can do so, and this guy can do on a PCIe 3.0, beats up to three and a half gigabytes a second. So we're leaving two and a half things uh, on the table. So even if you have a second port, if you have a gaming laptop, let's say you have a second port that's a PCIe 3.0, uh, it's so it's almost it feels like almost overkill. But ideally, what I want to happen is to convert it to use this converter. To the PC, uh, to the Wi-Fi card, 
and this is nice and low profile Th that's what i really like about it what you're gonna find is that sometimes um these wi-fi cards they're underneath um another ssd or somewhere else so this is kind of nice i like i like the way that this is designed so ideally i want to replace my wi-fi card and leave my drives alone and leave the second bay for you know like a gaming drive and, and have extra games stored there um and see maybe if i could do it with this with this or with this all together so in the next step of this video let's open up the laptop and then we'll do a speed test and see if it detects we'll download the driver of course um onto a windows 10 installation i believe in windows 10 let's take a quick lick, look at what um, these different extensions and how much they cost. Okay. This guy is 22 bucks. I ordered a whole bunch of them, you know, cause I don't know which one I need specifically. So this is a one point uh, by, by 1.0, if I understand it or 4.0. Support PCIe 3.0 stable transfer. PCIe 4.0 edge slot, but does it really give you the three? So we'll, we'll see. If I understand that you can even um, run a port on a 1.0, so boom, that's interesting. So some of them are producing the same one, but they just have a different company name. You see, uh, HOT, NFK. I just ordered one of each because, you know, th this could be useful to have around. I have laptops and 2688, JMT. Here's that uh, device that I found. Okay. This way, if, in case you could just type, type this stuff into Amazon and, and find it. You see the AE key, the little tooth thing. Here's the one we were looking at. And lastly, it's this one, just another, another company. Maybe some of them I repeated, but anyways, tell me which think thumb it up and um, perhaps, you know, we'll see, the, we'll see you in the continuation of this video. I'm excited to get this project done and we'll open up the laptop, connect this bad boy and see if we get some uh, nice connecting to it. All right, my friends, talk soon. Sounds like it's a good idea to electrically insulate these things so that they don't um, cause a short circuit somewhere at some point. So let's do that. So you, you see this is an AE key Wi-Fi card, but what's interesting is that the port might be a standard uh, NVMe port because you see there's no extra notch here. That's kind of interesting. This is what the slot looks like without those devices. This is the only one that would fit because the other device, even if I broke it off, it's only a 22 by 42. Now let's put the screw in. So I'll probably want to bend this over to the other side to over here and come out back here as an external port. This cable looks bendable to me, and it looks like it come, could come out back here that far and be completely working. And it should not jam too much in, in the cover. Now let's put the cover back on. That's the view with the cover back on. So now we have all the screws in. Let's see how this works. Let's see if this works. Can we open up the monitor? It looks like we can. Now let's get the NVMe adapter in. So this is what the daughter board looks like. I didn't screw in the screw all the way because I didn't want to bend it too much. But it looks like it works very well in this outdoor enclosure. And let's connect the other device. Let's connect this part to it. So this is a very, very thin cable. 
and this goes right in here on this device that fits in very well and now let's connect it to this part so this is what it looks like connected on the back this port I have to be careful not to touch these contact points because who knows there might be electricity running through here somewhere but it's probably otherwise fine and this is cool I could probably attach this somewhere where it could be useful I seem to be having an issue booting up the computer let's see if I can disconnect the card it will work now that the card is disconnected it's booting up Let's see if I could boot it with an SSD. Got this one over here. Let's see if another device would work in that slot. Maybe this SSD, it's a Gen 4 Aorus Gaming in a nice uh, aluminum case. I'm, I mean copper, feels nice and heavy. It's booting with the SSD. That's cool. I like that you can plug in the SSD in there. It's not detecting that SSD. So, and the mouse just froze up. So I don't think that um, that configuration works. Perhaps maybe it's the actual um, drive. Because this one's on four minute. This one came from a PC with Windows 10 on it. Um, so let's see if that works. I need to install a copper heatsink on it anyway. Check out my 3090 Ti over here. No, not the 3090 Ti, it's 3090 only. So, moment of truth. Um, it said the drive didn't exist. So there's some issues with this connector, uh, perhaps. Let's see if this adapter works. I'm gonna have to break it off a little bit, but hopefully it should work in this 2242 port. See the size? Let's break off a piece. Snaps good. I put the cable on first to see that if I could, uh, so I could fit it in because I'm not sure if the if it would fit otherwise. This cable is super long. Wow. I'm liking. It. I'm having um, good good feelings about this one. So how do we attach this screw to over here? I'm gonna try to figure it out. The screw attaches on the back, I think. That's an interesting design. Moment of truth, will it boot? Lucky what we got here, it's an Ethernet controller. Time to download the driver. That looks like the driver. That didn't work, but it sounds like it's all manufacturers of the same one, the Marvo Aquantia. That sounds like the chipset that we need. It looks like what you want to do is follow what that post said. The post said to go over here, Marvo Public Drivers, and select the AQC. That looks like the driver we want. And look, now it's there. Marvo Aquation 10 gigabit network adapter. Glad I found this workaround from a different uh, network card that I found. That's a PCIe. Uh, it sounds like they all use the same uh, chipsets, so. Looks like it's working. I'm loving it. This is the connection speed that I'm getting from uh, my device. I'm getting the speed jumping around a whole bunch right now. But this is copying from my NAS that has only an SSD that can maximum do 500 uh, megabytes a second. This thing feels really hot to the touch. Really hot. Copying from this device to another that has a 10 gigabit connection. This is the max speed that I'm getting at 466. 498, 499, 440, 4500. Okay. It's 
topping SSD to SSD. This thing is really hot to the touch. Um, it works, but I'm not the most happiest person with it. Never give up, never surrender. So yesterday what we found out is this guy wasn't working. So chances are possibly the Wi-Fi card adapter, this specific one might be screwed up or may, it just might not work well with this. Yesterday we found out that this guy, 2242 connection, connected to that specific laptop, I was able to get file transfers. This part got really hot. Uh, but I think that's okay because that's why they put, you know, on this one, this is a 10 gigabit card that I just got today. Um, this gets really, really hot. So I covered up my serial number, but this is how it looks like in the back. My plan is to cover these electronics up so that I don't uh, short circuit something by accident. But anyways, so here is the plan. Since this guy wasn't working, maybe on a different laptop it would work. Today I'm going to put a fresh drive and a fresh Windows 10 installation. I like Windows 10 better. Um, I'll switch to Windows 11 when I'll have to. So what I got today was this adapter. This specific adapter is a PCIe to the AE key. So maybe it's just this guy wasn't working, but I found with this adapter, I wasn't able to even detect um, an NVMe drive I put in here. So chances are this guy is broken, but that's okay. Um, here is a much more quality adapter kit, it looks like. And you see over here, up here, it says AE key. So it's a replacement for this one. And what I like about these guys, and look, they give you this long, basically a couple different extension cords and this whole board. So possibly maybe with this company's uh, adapter, it will work. And I believe this is the JMT, if I remember correctly but this might be the better kit. Um, you know, links below, obviously. You could check it out. Um, but I, so far, so good. I like this. So, summarizing things up. And this is an um, NVMe to the PCIe adapter. So the idea is the PCIe adapters are for this 10 gigabit card, the TP-Link. What I found out yesterday was that both are using the Aquantia uh, 107 chipsets. And I was able to download the chipset for this one. And it worked perfectly doing that by following what they were talking about on here. The reason why I did that was I noticed that the driver package that, did, that wasn't working for download, maybe I typed in the wrong character, um, I prefer to just download from the manufacturer websites anyway than from some shady China website, even though this might be a perfectly good manufacturer too. But this thing worked. So we got up to 550 uh, megabytes a second transfers. That's probably what my 10 gigabit uh, connected NAS um, can operate because it has uh, standard SSDs. There are SATA, which can do up to like what 550 megabytes. So, and it has 10 gigabit connection. So we were able to max it out. Um, we're gonna see this, if it works with the AE key, the ideal is that it would work with the AE key. And because this solution over here is a hundred bucks and this one is $200. Plus my plan is to replace this heatsink with an all copper version so that this unit works better so I could spread the heat all over it. So it's going to be nice and uniform. Um, but this is $200, but this is only a um, hundred, half the price. And either way, you have to plug it into a device in the laptop. So my goal is to be able to figure it out once and for all, which adapter would work with 10 gigabit whether I would need to, whether I could use the AE key, which is supposed to be a 1X lane, 
which is supposed to be up to what 10 gigabits a second if i understand it correctly or if i have to use the times four lane from the pcie express bus and uh, see which one works maybe the ae key will work with this guy but this might be a better solution because either way with this one i had to get an extension daughter board to be able to connect it in there because think about it like this you can't really stick this into any laptop whatsoever um but what i believe this is designed for is for computers that let's say you have a big graphics card and you don't have space for a card like this it would block airflow you would just install this with its little tiny heatsink and probably replace the heatsink and right on your motherboard and you have the coolant capacity but if you have it installed on the laptop you still have to extend it from inside the laptop to outside the laptop because this heatsink would not fit in there uh it's too tall but since we're ex already extending to outside the laptop, might as well just go for one of these devices. It's cheaper and plug it into a PCIe card. And so we'll see which one works. We'll see if this adapter, this AE adapter works for this card. So that's test number one. Or we'll see if an AE or an M key, this is called an M key, adapter works um for, for that so let's get to the next video and uh test it out on the laptop so i installed this ae key adapter to over here into one of these i'm having uh good feelings that this actually might work pretty well so let's check it out this is what it looks like with the cover on so we just rotate it and check it out. Let's see. This is what it looks like with it connected. Let's see if it will boot. Moment of truth. Will it boot? Looks like so. Unfortunately, it's not being detected. So this setup is not working with this uh, AE key to PCIe adapter. The issue might be that I didn't plug in a power cable here because I don't have an exact power supply to plug into here and that defeats the whole point of plugging this into a laptop. Now let's try it with this adapter. Plugging in the 10 gigabit card. So the AE key to the PCIe. We'll see if it shows up in the device manager. So this is what it looks like being connected. So now the moment of truth, will this work? Maybe, maybe not. No, it's not working. It's not showing up in the device manager. It's not working with an SSD either, it seems. All right, friends. So the conclusion is this, using the AE connector, this one, the Wi-Fi connector, because it's a one X speed lane that you get i would be getting on this laptop specifically it's a thinkpad t14 i was able to get 370 megabytes transfers a second using this adapter so it's really interesting this does work um i'm getting maximum 370 megabytes a second you could uh connect a five gigabit card uh via usb you would get technically the same speed but this is kind of cool this is a 10 gigabit card and it's connected via an adapter riser card through one of these so that's the max connection i'm getting and both work and both ae card adapters do work so um i mean tell me what you guys get um the by four lane i've actually tried on another laptop the by four lane, I was actually able to get over 525 megabyte, megabytes a second transfer speed. But um, I could have probably gotten more, but the drives that it was transferring to were SATA, which top out of 550 megabytes a second. So technically you would get better performance in an M.2 M key slot as opposed to the um regular one the empty slot is this 
the NVMe one. Um, but because you might want to use the M key slot or you might not have an extra one, you could still connect a faster Ethernet card uh, solution to uh, that port and it does work. But again, caveat, caveat, caveat. Very interesting. It's a, it's a bit janky if you think about it. You know, you have this um, wire sticking out, but it does work. On this one, it might be a better wire, but I mean, it's still kind of janky, but it could work with a small form factor PC, which is cool. And um, yeah, good luck with it. And that's the conclusion. Uh, it does work. So on another laptop that I had in Lenovo, uh, it wasn't, um, the AE card slot wasn't working with these adapters. But on this laptop, it is. So it depends also on the laptop too, or on the device. So caveat emptor, um, the, pr the, the price difference between this, this is, this is double the cost because it's a designed NVMe card but what I do like is that you have this bigger heatsink on this one as opposed to on this one because it's an NVMe slot, but it's chunky. So it's neither here nor there. It's too thick to fit inside the laptop and you still need to do uh, to be outside the laptop. And I like this because this is a more heavy duty cable over here. I feel more comfortable with this lying on the table as opposed to this ribbon, tiny, thin, thin guy over here uh, regarding to that, but both require a riser card. So each one is probably like about $25, $30, but this is only $100 and you have the nice big heat sink over here. But this one is $200. So it's already a janky setup. It's already not very portable. So probably this might be the better deal. All right, friends, uh, good luck, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys could also figure out what to do with this networking situation, too.